Good evening. Welcome to the season premiere of Face to Face. Tonight, Independent Senator Patrick Rizzo. I'm guessing you might know who he is, so let's get right to the first half of our interview with Senator Rizzo. In December 2012, reports of irregular housing expense claims sparks a deeper look into individual senators' expenses. Rizzo was arrested in February 2013 for an incident relating to domestic violence. He was charged with assault and sexual assault. Due to these charges, the Senate suspended Rizzo. Later that month, the Senate Committee of Internal Economy announced that Rizzo and three other senators would go through a forensic audit to determine the validity of their expense claims. The accounting company Deloitte was tasked with carrying out an independent audit which was tabled in the Senate in May 2013. Deloitte concluded that Brazo had made no false claims, but it could not make a decision on the housing issue, as the Senate's definition of primary residence was too vague. A Senate subcommittee on living allowance wrote their own assessment of the situation. In August 2013, the RCMP alleged that Brazo was wrong to claim his father's home in Maniwaki as his primary residence. If the allegation were true, it would mean Brazo committed fraud in order to claim a $22,000 a year of taxpayer-funded housing allowance. Rizzo was removed from the Conservative caucus and prevented from sitting in the Senate, although the senator was still paid his full salary. In April 2014, police alleged that Brazo got drunk and got into an altercation with a woman. He was arrested with new charges of assault, cocaine possession, uttering threats and breach of bail conditions. He pled not guilty. In October 2014, an officer found Brazo sleeping with it within his car. He was charged with violating bail conditions and intoxicated driving. A knife in the vehicle led to a charge of weapons possession, a violation of bail conditions. Rizzo was court-ordered to two months of detox rehabilitation. In September 2015, Rizzo pled guilty to simple assault and possessing cocaine as part of a plea bargain. He was formally acquitted of the sexual assault charge. At the end of October 2015, Brazil was granted an unconditional discharge by the Quebec court. However, he remained suspended from the Senate. As an independent senator, Brazil returned to his Senate seat in September 2016, after the charges of fraud and be breach of trust were withdrawn by the Crown. Thank you for joining us on the season premiere of Face to Face, uh, Senator. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, you know, to put it blunt, one of the reasons I wanted you on uh, as our season premiere was because you're someone that some of our people love to hate. And uh, I kind of want to give you, uh, you know, bring some of their allegations forward and have you answer them, um, you know, with your own words. And, uh, you know, here at Face to Face, we want to make people comfortable so that they can deliver their message to the audience. And it's up to our audience to decide. So, well, you know, I guess let's start at the beginning. You know, when we go to that idea of, of people, you know, having issues with you, I guess it kind of starts with CAP. Uh, the Congress of Aboriginal People, now known as the Assembly of Indigenous Peoples. What do you th how do you think people look at CAP that may have reflected on you? Well, I think for, for uh, many a number of years, I think that uh, a lot of uh, First Nations people in particular uh, saw the, the Assembly of First Nations uh, as, uh, as a national voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously when I came into the CAP fold, when I was the Vice Chief and then later National Chief, uh, I saw my role as being somewhat of uh, an opposition to the AFN, not on all issues, but certainly on issues that affected uh, the rights and benefits of off-reserve uh, Aboriginal people. And so I think that uh, obviously it, when you're in politics, whether Aboriginal or mainstream, you're, you're always going to get uh, some naysayers and some supporters. Uh, but certainly I, I definitely see that uh, some of the naysayers or, or people who have criticized me uh, stemmed and started uh, when I was with the Congress of Aboriginal Peoples. because. There was a new organization and a new voice, uh, certainly under my leadership at the time, that um, that came to surface. So, uh, but I think, uh, having said that, uh, having uh, opposition and having criticism uh, is a good thing. Well, I guess the, the issue then, you know, there's a lot of people who see, you know, w when the AFN doesn't start, isn't playing ball with the government, that all of a sudden cap, the government starts talking to cap, you know. D was that going on? Do you see that perspective or, 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 you know, from the inside, was that happening? Well, it certainly happened uh, back in 2005, 2006 in particular, uh, where you had the former Liberal government under uh, Paul Martin uh, paying more attention to, to the Assembly of First Nations, for example, and sort of shoving cap on, on, the, uh, on the sidelines. And, uh, 
obviously when I was uh, the leader of the organization I didn't like the way we were treated at the time and so just started developing a uh, relationship with the opposition who were the uh, conservative party uh, back then uh, and you know through uh, relationship building uh, you know it led to uh, some positives for the organization yeah. uh, uh, within CAP uh, and later led to uh, my appointment in the uh, Senate of Canada. When First Nation or Indigenous people get involved with the Conservative Party, a lot of times they get so far and then they find out that the traditions that Conservatives are upholding aren't necessarily sort of community traditions, but specific to English or French culture, that they, they come from a cultural perspective. And so for many Indigenous people, they look at the Conservatives as being anti-Indigenous, you know, or, or more involved with the European culture, Indigenous culture. Um, do you see that, or, or do you, you know, d is, that a, is that a thing? Well, look, I, I don't think it's, uh, um, I don't think that's what's happening. Okay. Uh, I think that happens within every mainstream uh, political party, yeah. whether it's the Liberals, the NDP, or Conservatives, uh, because, you know, I've lived it. I, I tried to change things from within. Uh, yes, it was the Conservative Party, uh, but I tried to do that, and, uh, and uh, for, for, for some issues I was successful, and for most I, I was not. Uh, and uh, people have to remember that when you're part of a political party, it's not sometimes your, your morals and your principles are trumped, uh, no pun intended, yeah. uh, you know, for the political party of the day. Uh, so that's very difficult, and I think that's what, uh, you know, many young people who, are, who may be wanting to go into politics have to, have to remember that uh, it's not easy because, uh, you know, within politics we're still living within a, a white man and a white woman's world. Mm -hmm. uh, but, th but that's the work that we have to do to try and change things and perspectives from within. Yeah. Uh, but I, th I don't think it was just a conservative thing, no. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you, you know, do you uphold conservative ideals? Do you see yourself as a conservative when it comes to you know, conservative philosophy? And, and um, yeah, do you see yourself as a, as a small C conservative? Well, for the, for the record, uh, in my lifetime, I voted both uh, for liberal candidates uh, and conservative candidates. So obviously when I was within the party, uh, you know, I, I was loyal to that party and uh, I maintained uh, most of uh, conservative values, uh, uh, talking about individual rights in particular for First Nations people. Uh, and I tried to, uh, like I said, I tried to change uh, some of the, those things from within. Uh, some successful, others not. Uh, but uh, no, now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a happy independent. And uh, I think that uh, go moving forward, I see my role being more uh, positive for, for, uh, for all Canadians, including First Nations and, and other Indigenous peoples, because uh, I'm not attached to any political party, and uh, that feels pretty good. Yeah. Well, we're going to get a little bit more into the, uh, the politics of being an independent and, and, and some of the conversations you have as a senator uh, later on. But, uh, you know, some say that when you were con appointed as a conservative senator, it was Phil Fontaine's turn to be appointed as a senator. There was a, a feeling that, you know, there's, a, there's this position here. They want an Indigenous person. Phil was sort of next up. Do you feel that way or, or you know, did you have your own... Um, you know, you had your own relationship. No, look, uh, you know, when, uh, when I received the phone call to, to sit as a senator, it was a complete surprise. Uh, never in my lifetime would I have thought that I, I would have uh, received such a phone call from, from any sitting prime minister. Uh, but, but, you know, having said that, uh, you know, I, I was appointed from Quebec, so I know that Phil's from Manitoba, I, and I don't recall if there was uh, any vacancies from Manitoba at the yeah. time. I, I don't believe there was, but I may be mistaken. Yeah. Uh, but I was appointed from Quebec, and... Uh, and look, you know, uh, there's, there's still 20 vacancies right now, so maybe it's not too late for Phil and, and or other uh, First Nations or Indigenous people. Well, I can think of a few chiefs and grand chiefs that are still uh, hoping for their Senate, Senate spot. Okay. Um, well, you know, can you tell us a little bit about that call? Like, you're 35 years old. Uh, you're getting offered, you know, basically what's a, a quarter of a million dollar a year job, uh, you know, in one of the most prestigious organizations uh, in, in Canada. You know. What was going on in your head? What, what was, you know, how did you feel about all that? Well, it was, uh, to make a long story short, I was uh, driving back, uh, back home from, uh, from, from CAP, as a matter of fact, at the end of the day, and I got a call from uh, the Chief of Staff to the Prime Minister uh, at the time, saying that the Prime Minister wanted to meet with me at a certain time, so I had just uh, had enough time to go home, uh, put on a suit, because yeah. uh, I was dressed in jeans, and so I put on a suit, I went to Parliament Hill, I met him for about 10 minutes, and... Uh, asked me if I would, I would consider um, 
uh, you know, sitting in the Senate, mm -hmm. and um, I, I immediately said uh, yes. Uh, and uh, you know, he said that he uh, would like me to continue my job as uh, as the chief of the Congress at the time, which yeah. created a little bit of con controversy. Um, uh, but having said that, uh, you know, it was a short ten-minute meeting, and. Uh, a month later, uh, it was, uh, or I guess two weeks later, it was made official. Well, what did? You, what were some of the reasons that he said he wanted you? Well, like I said, uh, I had established a pretty good working relationship with uh, Jim Prentice at the time, mm -hmm. who was the Indian Affairs Minister, and uh, he's the one who opened the door to uh, to uh, for myself and the and uh, Prime Minister Harper to have a meeting uh, before my my appointment. Uh, and so we just built this relationship, talking about greater accountability and transparency. Uh, you know, uh, working on the um, the repeal of Section 67 of the Canadian Human Rights Act, which is something that I championed along with others. Yeah. Uh, and so we just built this relationship. And uh, he said uh, essentially that there was a vacancy in Quebec and that he wanted uh, a First Nations person there. So I, I, uh, I, I was proud to uh, to take the appointment. Yes. Well, you know, I. For me as a 30, you know, thinking back to my 35-year-old self, it's, it's not something I could turn down, you know, I, I don't think. And there, there's a lot of people that, that say you were signing up with the Conservative Party, I guess, uh, to be, you know, um, their collaborator, I guess, was how some people see it. But, uh, you know, when somebody comes to you when you're 35 years old and offers you a position at that level, I, you know, I'd, how could you not say yes? Well, look, there's, there's a, you know, some people will be... Uh perhaps hypocritical sometimes and say that they would uh, turn down such an offer but uh, I, I have viewed it as a an opportunity certainly as a fir young First Nations person to to be able to change things from uh, from within and, and change things from from the, the mainstream system yeah. uh, and so uh, that's how I viewed it and uh, but having said that it could have been any Prime Minister of any political stripes and color yeah. I would have accepted it because it's a privilege to to be in Parliament and to be in the Senate because at the end of the day there are only 105 of those positions in the country and I'm fortunate enough and uh, humbled to uh, still have that position. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Now let's move on to the expense scandal. Um, when did it start looking like it was going south to you? Well, uh, to be quite honest, um, uh, with respect to the, the, the expense scandal, yeah. um, never. Uh, because, you know, there were some media reports that uh, CTV had done at the time saying that I didn't live where I claimed I lived. And uh, uh, ironically enough, um, the criteria that the Senate now utilizes to determine the primary residence, yep. I'm the one who furnished them. I was the test case, okay, okay. which includes a driver's license, a provincial health card, and um, income tax returns. Yep. And so at the time, I had responded to a, a subcommittee of the Board of Internal Economy, and I had demonstrated all those documents. Yep. And uh, you know everything uh, seemed fine. Uh, I was represented by, by legal counsel at the time. Uh, the senators which that I met said that uh, everything seemed fine, I had nothing to worry about. Uh, and ironically, uh, about a week after I had uh, other sets of charges uh, back in 2013, yeah. uh, that's where I felt I got uh, thrown under the bus by the Conservatives, okay. uh, you know, just for political expediency. Prior to those other charges that you, you felt that you were still getting the support of the party? Um, well, there's a couple of other issues that uh, that uh, started the downward downward uh, spiral with respect to that, which yep. uh, you know I can answer if if you wish. Uh, but 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 with respect to the expense scandal, you know I did exactly what I was told by yep. Senate administration and finance that I could do, and and I've always had that in black and white. Yep. Uh, so the decision to suspend me uh, and perhaps others uh... was for political reasons not administrative reasons and certainly not for any criminality yeah. uh, and we now know that when did you start realizing that you were becoming sort of uh, or uh, being seen as a political you know uh... persona non grata i guess within the conservative party like how did that all you know when did you s alarm bells start going off for, for you in r relation to your relationship with the well, it's very office? It's, it, it's very simple it uh... It all began because you know, yes, I was, you know, in the media. Yes, I was on TV talking about conservative values and principles and positions. Yeah. Because that was my job. Yeah. Um, I would have did the same thing with the NDP or, or the Liberal Party. That, that was my job. I was loyal to the party that appointed me. 
Uh, but having said that, behind the scenes, there's a lot of work that I did and tried to do, uh, in particular with uh, calling for a national inquiry on missing and murdered Indigenous women. Uh, because at one point in caucus, I, I stood up at the mic and uh, I asked the Prime Minister because they had did an inquiry on missing salmon stock mm -hmm. in the Pacific, which cost millions of dollars, uh, several chapters uh, of that inquiry, and I asked the Prime Minister, how can we have inquiries on missing salmon and not on human beings that are our indigenous women and girls? Yeah. And, uh, you know, to be quite honest, I had a lot of support from caucus members because a lot of people got up and clapped and supported, you know, my, my intervention yep. right in front of the Prime Minister. Uh, but others didn't and uh, it was shortly thereafter because I was trying to do more and more and I was trying to convince the Prime Minister to launch an inquiry uh, but he did not want that okay. and the second thing which which is important uh, before I was first placed on a leave of absence in uh, February of 2013 I had um, managed to have a study in the Human Rights uh, Committee within the Senate for the rights and benefits of off-reserve uh, indigenous peoples all across this country. Mm -hmm. So for the first time in Canadian history, we had an inquiry on the rights and benefits of those peoples. Yeah. And so I get placed on a leave of absence, so I'm suspended from the Senate, and the Conservative leadership at the time in the Senate decided to pull that study out of the Senate. So that study wasn't about Patrick Brosley, it was about the rights and privileges and benefits of uh, the vast majority of Indigenous peoples across this country, but you know, they, they pulled that out. And so that says to me that I was creating and probably ruffling a lot of feathers within the Conservative within the party, party because it wasn't perhaps part of their agenda, but it was certainly part of mine. And, and that's unfortunately uh, things that many people won't know because these are work, the, the work that was being done by myself yeah. uh, behind the scenes, even though I was a Conservative. Well, you talked about this a little bit before we came on air about the difference between sort of, um, you know, being a First Nation person and, 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 and you know, where your politics and where your center lies there as compared to being a Canadian and where their politics and their center lies. So, so did you experience these two streams, <coughs> excuse me, in the House, and, and this is where you feel that some of this conflict is coming from within the party and you? Uh, absolutely. I, I've, I lived it every single day that I, uh, that I worked uh, uh, in, the, in the Senate. Uh, but at the end of the day, like I said, we have our own principles and morals and our own agendas that we would like to see come to fruition, mm -hmm. but uh, like it or not, at the end of the day, it's the political party that's in power that decides. Yeah. Uh, and that's a, a small group of, group of people, uh, and it's very hard to convince them otherwise, but we have to continue doing it because if, if we as First Nations don't try to uh, do it and, and bring about change from within, then uh, it's just not going to happen. So it's a work in progress, it's tough, but that's what makes the, the position so uh, interesting. and. Uh, you know, that's what keeps me going every single day. You know, were there, were there particular low points? You know, in the last three years, you've been gone through some pretty rough, rough things. You know, when it comes to, you know, well, in the last three years, were there were particular po low points that really affected you? Well, look, it seems as, uh, you know, my, my downfall uh, started with, um, you know, assault charges, um, and then later on, uh, uh, suspension from the Senate um, and what uh, a lot of people don't know is that uh, in those last three years I I hit rock bottom uh, financially emotionally uh, psychologically you name it um, you know I I, I went uh, I, I, I've lived some through some tough times uh, it's still not easy um, but uh, I know uh, I know what it is to live in poverty believe it or not uh, it was that tough uh, but luckily um, you know, I had a family that supported me, and uh, at the end of the day, my dad saved my life. Uh, he brought me back to basics. Uh, he brought me back to being humbled yeah. uh, and to appreciate every single day, like, like we're experiencing uh, here in Ottawa today. Yeah. Um, uh, but obviously, uh, some low points is that uh, I attempted suicide uh, this, uh, this past January, and uh, it wasn't the first time that I tried, yeah. uh, and it was certainly not the first time that I thought about it, but... Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm just glad to be alive. Yeah. Well, can you tell us a little bit about your dad? Like, uh, you know, uh, throughout all this time, you've mentioned him, uh, uh, you know, regularly. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about him and, and how he's contributed to, to your life? Well, look, uh, my dad uh, came from a, you know, he didn't come from a rich family. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, his, died, uh, his dad uh, passed away when he was uh, 15. So he was on his own uh, basically since the age of 15. And uh, he left the reserve uh, looking for work, uh, wanted a, be a better life for himself. And, uh, he, you know, to make a long story short, he's a self-made man and uh, has always been a, a man of principles and morals and was always very strict with us. School it was number one. And uh, being on time was uh, also important. So a lot of small little things that helps you throughout life. And, uh, you know, and he just, uh, you know, took me, uh, took me aside and took me in and, uh, you know, just had some uh, heart to heart, uh, father to son talks and uh, just brought me back to the person I used to be. Um, uh, you know, because, you know, uh, working in, in there uh, is, uh, is not only is it life changing, but it's fast paced and you forget about yourself because uh, you're, you're constantly trying to work for people. So it's not always easy. So there's always demands coming, but you, you leave yourself go. And uh, so he brought me back to basics and just to, to enjoy life and to be patient and, uh, you know, to, to take it one day at a time. Yeah. Uh, because uh, at one point, um, you know, I want to take my own life because I, I didn't, I didn't see any purpose and I, I, didn't, I didn't believe that people would have cared if I would have gone. Yeah. Um, but uh, I've, I've uh, seen since then that uh, that's not the case. Uh, I have a lot of support and uh, I'm just uh, one lucky son of a gun. Yeah. Well, you have, you're a dad yourself and you know, um, you had a beautiful little baby girl uh, in a, uh, while all this was, uh, was going on. So, you know, how am, were, were your kids influential in, in lifting you back up? Well, like I said, um, um, throughout those last three years, I, I did hit rock bottom, and uh, I've never mentioned this, but, uh, you know, I, I lost everything, absolutely everything that you can think of, except for my family, yeah. uh, that I lost. And for, for a while, I also lost uh, my kids. Uh, but uh, since then, I've been uh, seeing them again, and things have been uh, positive, uh, things have been getting back to normal, so uh, absolutely they, they were influential. But you know, having said that, when I when I tried to, to, to commit suicide, um, obviously I was uh, you know not thinking of, of everybody around me. Uh, not to say that I was egotistical or, or just thinking about myself, because uh, I think that there's you know I, I was afraid to get help. I needed help at some point, uh, but I was too proud to get help. Yeah. And if there's a message that I can say to any person listening out there, is that uh, if you have problems, then, you know, go and seek help because it, it can change your life and it's certainly better than, than taking your own life. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it came close. It, it was very scary. Stay tuned. We'll tell you who's on the next Face to Face after the break. Welcome back. That was the first half of our interview with Senator Patrick Brazeau. On tomorrow's show, we'll go into the charges of sexual assault that he received a discharge for and ask him if that disqualifies him as a credible advocate for the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous women. I'm Michael Hutchinson. Be well.